Doom, doom, doom. Uh, this is Alex Hay, and we're doing a tutorial about how to animate splines in Cinema 4D, and specifically how not to animate them as well. So, um, recently I was working on a project with some spline animation, so I decided to make a tutorial about how not to animate splines. So let's say we have a spline, right? Um, and some tutorials, old tutorials, will tell you that you can animate a spline by using this button here. And you can keyframe, and you can move over and move the spline and keyframe, and then it animates. Don't do this ever. Don't. This is really bad. Just don't do it. Um, good ways to animate splines. Uh, my personal favorite is by using nulls. So I can make a null, move it here, make a null, move it there, make a null, move it here, make a null, move it here. And then I can select all of these nulls, and I can go MoGraph, Tracer, and connect elements, or all objects, all objects, there you go. And now when we move the points, we have a spline, and we can change this to spline type, B-spline, and intermediate points, uniform, and 8. And now, we have a nice self-spline to animate. And we can animate each null individually because each null, let's get them all little triangles or pyramids, whatever. Because it's an object and you can constrain this object, you can do all kinds of fun things with it. So it makes it very convenient to animate splines. Now you can also uh, put these old these guys in a little fracture object. So if you make a MoGraph fracture object, you can drag them all into the fracture. Don't forget to change this tracer here. You have to delete all these from here, and you have to put the tracer in here um, because otherwise it's not going to work. And now with a fracture object, you can actually even uh, use a noise deformer or something on it. So let's get out little random deformer and let's go change that from random to noise and press play. And there you go. You got a moving spline as well. And obviously now you can use effectors and stuff to animate only certain ones or whatever it is. Uh, why here, you might ask, I chose uniform. Let's just quickly go over that. Um, if we hold the Alt button here and we put you into a sweep knob and hold the Shift button and put a little inside in there and scale this guy down and change this to 80. I don't know why it's on 60. Now let's go into our... Uh, wireframe view. The reason I have it on uniform is because right now if I move any of these points you'll see the amount of segments stays the same. And this is important because when you animate stuff, if you have textures or something, this can really mess with your textures. So you want to keep them the same amount because if you change it to something like adaptive or subdivided, you'll see that as you move a point the amount of divisions changes See, like it's always going to be the same maximum length. There's way more divisions now. And that's not really good for animation. Like in some cases it'll be good, but I personally always prefer to put this onto uniform. And then just throw the whole thing into a subdivision surface. And it's smooth. And so you can always turn it off and you have a nice low res thing to work with. So the next way to animate splines because here a problem is you're kind of stuck with, um, you know, B spline. You can't really do a custom Bezier curve and stuff. The next step is if we make a custom Bezier curve. So let's go front view, draw a custom Bezier curve. I'll say you brought it in from a different application, and you want to animate it. We're going to actually use joints for this. But we're not actually going to be using joints, we're just kind of cheating to get joints. Maybe there's a better way of using this tool without joints, but I haven't found it yet. So let's go to character and make a joint, just one joint. Whoops. Doesn't matter where it is. Um, get rid of the second spline, sorry. Let's go character and joint tool. And hold the control key and draw a joint. That's enough. Now, here, make sure you're in object mode. Right click. Um, where is it? Character and IK spline. And drag this spline in here and this end joint, the second one, into the end. 
and you'll see it aligns to the spline. But we really don't care about this joint because this joint is irrelevant. What we care about is here, um, we have this tab called handles. We can click on it here. And let's look at our spline. And in point mode, we have one, two, three, four, five points. So we're going to add one, two, three, four, five handles. And then we're going to go create, 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 create until all these are full. And then we have these nice splines, uh, in nulls. And let's make them into pyramids and change this to XY. And now in point mode, we have pyramids that can move our Bezier curves. And we can even rotate them. And they'll move the handles with them. How nifty is that? And again, you can animate these however you want now. You can constrain them to stuff. You can group them and parent them and stuff. And you can even grow these like here. You can see that this one, you can grow the length of the Bezier handles. And you can even you know, push it way past. So this is another handy way to animate splines if you already have Bezier handles that you're working with. And this joint, you can just hide it and it won't bother you. So there you go. Uh, the last way to animate splines, absolutely, I don't know why you'd need it, but if for some reason it's a small animation, you don't want to go through setting this up, uh, use the, once again, don't forget, don't use this. Uh, use the character tag, the pose morph. Let's go pose morph and turn on points, and I have a base pose and a other pose, and you can move this, you can scale this guy and move him, and now you can animate between these two poses. So this may be useful for what you're doing uh, in case the other two methods don't cover you but the most important thing is don't use this point level animation because you don't have control over easing you don't have control of individual points in the timeline and it's just a massive pain to deal with because it just is so there you go how to animate splines in under seven minutes <laughs>